Hello everyone and welcome to the Ohio Winter League Series number 8 at Panther 335 in Macomb, Ohio. This is a really awesome course. We are excited to be concluding the Winter League Series here. This is the 8th and final event. So in addition to winners for this event, there will also be uh, payouts and placement for the entire league series overall. And for this event, we will be following shots from myself, Greg Jersick, and James Lawrence. You are joining us for the round one front nine coverage on this video. Stay tuned for three more. We're also sponsoring a CTP mystery box on hole 16. It's a par three, 253 feet with a double mandatory between the two fences right next to the train tracks, which makes for really interesting distractions. And we are starting on hole 10. It's a par three, 238. And I'm throwing my ESP Malta. Just barely it sticking it safe on the edge of the creek. There's an OB creek long. There's also OB path in the middle of the fairway and a couple trees and a bench. I think it's James gets a lucky little kick off the branch there and drops him right on the edge of the circle. And that's a great putt to Way open to up there, his first hole here with a birdie. See if I can accomplish the same. Uh, just a little bit high. The conditions we're dealing with here to start it, we're starting off at about 10 a.m. on Saturday, and it is cold I love that and the cross windy. Is on the sign as well. And it's going to slowly get warmer and sunnier throughout the uh, two rounds here. Hole 11 is a par three with a hanging basket on the side of the cross here. And James with a great shot. Puts it right up the middle. That should be an easy birdie. I'm going with my Prodigy A1. And this just wasn't... It wasn't much of anything. It wasn't far enough. It wasn't high enough. It wasn't anything. And now I somehow found the only little tree anywhere near this basket. And uh, I'm going to be putting in some practice on my straddle spin putt because it almost always comes out low, but it is accurate. That's a great catch from the basket. Look how high and right that putt is. And just one chain sucks it in there Good catch, for another basket. birdie. That's back-to-back -back birdies for James. And because I went under this hanging basket, I've got a little bit of a comebacker to save my par. And that'll do it. The pars out here at uh, Panther are really generous. Uh, case in point, hole 12 is a par 4, 323 feet. And it's just kind of a stock straight shot. If you're confident with a forehand, you could get it there. You're looking at it, man. And James it puts himself on the edge of circle. Right. I'm going to go with a it's, thumber. It's a here. I think James has thrown his Christmas buzz three holes in a row now. This is my active premium mentor. And I'm pretty confident with my thumber to get close to 300 feet. The wind nice kept it from pushing a little bit closer. <clears throat> and the first thumber of the day always hurts your thumb. So I was a little bit sore after that one. And that was decent height, just a little bit to the right. So I'm not, you know, too unhappy. See if James can get this step put. Oh, and Ooh, high and right man. just like the last hole. But Great this run. time the basket doesn't catch it for him. And we'll have two quick tap outs for birdie, I guess, according to the course. And we'll move on to hole 13. It's a short par 3, 183. And this time James is throwing his new tour series. Or I guess it's not tour series, but a big Z Luna that just came out. He's enjoying that. And uh, the 
underlying sort of plot thread here for me on these first few holes is I just couldn't figure out what disc to throw on a lot of these early holes. They're short. I'm kind of uncomfortable with the distance. I don't like throwing my putter, but I threw it anyways. And now I've got this low hanging branch and you can see me kind of shake my head after that throw. Mentally, I just was not in a really good place here on these early holes. And that's another oh spin God. putt. And it looks hits so another good. cage. And I just played in the Ice Bowl in Columbus uh, recently, and every single spin straddle putt ended up low as well. There's another low putt. So something to work on, maybe for both of us. James takes his first par, and I'm right behind him with one for me as well. Yeah, On to hole 14, par 3, 214, the basket's tucked behind those two trees. And James is throwing a clear, get freaky zone. And that lands right in the middle of the first tree. We'll see where he's at in just a minute. And once again, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to throw, so I'm just going with my Raptor to kind of hope it's overstable enough to push in there. But I pulled it a little bit too straight, not enough hyzer, and that is long. Oh, yeah. I, I like that play though, you should have an open look. Play. And long is not good because there is a second tree just behind the basket. So all I can do here is just pitch up nice. for par and move on. Yep. Which in hindsight is not terrible, but I was not happy about it at the time, I can tell you that much. Huh? James has got a really interesting stance. He does have a gap Laser through beam. these branches. And that's a great putt that's for another birdie. birdie. He's four down through five so far. James is on fire. Really creative spot to be. You'll occasionally see uh, another guy in the background with us. That's Matt, who was on our card today. He was great to play with. Matt, it was enjoyable having you out there with us. On to hole 15. Par 3, 294. Right, James's buzz just to fades off to the left. We got a strong uh, right to left sort of cross tailwind that's going to push a lot of the discs to the left. And I'm going with my Chris Dickerson FX2, and I'm trying to just hang it wide to the right so that it can fade into this basket. And watching this come in, I'm really concerned it's going to skip left, but it oh, doesn't. It skips Sit. straight forward. And whoa, whoa, whoa. I should have an easy look at birdie. Holy moly. Uh... James's shot just left him kind of around this tree, and mm -hmm. he likes an Anheuser putt. But that's not that's not going to cut it on this one. He'll have to settle for a par if he can clean this up. And he can. That's good. Good. Avoid the bogey on what should be an easy par three. And I'm feeling good. This should be a, a good birdie look here. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you can see exactly how I feel about it at the time. I, it was a, a mental battle, these first uh, nine holes for sure. Moving on to hole 16, par three, 253, double mandatory. James makes the double mando and fades out to the left. Not a bad shot. Once again, the the Christmas buzz is doing work for him today. I'm going to go for my C-Line MD3. Oh, come on. And I just I don't understand how I didn't get it to flip up. Maybe the wind oh, nice. kept Great it from pitch. flipping up, but I get so That's lucky to hit the post over. there on the mando. I'm, I made the mando by about a foot, and here's my look at birdie. Come on, Bobby. Boy, does Let's that feel go. good. <laughs> I think I think I say while I'm walking to the basket here, boy, I needed that. And that is absolutely the truth. Yeah, there you go. That Let's one felt go. good. That was at least 40 feet. Just dead center, plopped right into the basket. Felt good. Let's see if James can match that. Great putt. Five oh. down through seven holes. 
And again, you know, the pars are generous. We're on to hole 17, par 4, 315 feet. And that is the worst case scenario. That's going up into the reservoir, far, far out into the water. And that was James's four time Paul Macbeth buzz. And uh, I know he's still broken up about it. Leave him a commiseration in the comments. And I decided to go up and do the exact opposite and throw it way out of bounds left. So James and I are both out of bounds. The path and left is out of bounds on this hole. So James is just, just trying to pitch up for a look at par, leaves it a little long. And I crossed early, so I'm way back on the fairway. With an approach with my A1. I get a good right. skip, so that's not an unmakeable putt by any means. But we're just at this point trying to scramble for par on what should be a very eagleable par four. And you know, this may turn out to be a bogey for James. But it's gonna feel more like a double bogey. And that that's a nasty spit out, and it's gonna feel like a double bogey for me as well. For exactly the same reason. I think we're just happy to be moving on to the next hole. Uh, and that's our first first red on our scorecard so far. One hole left to play on our front nine, the par three, 206 feet, OB Creek between the tee and the basket here, a couple trees to navigate. And there's James and his buzz again doing work. And that's a great line. Is it gonna drop in? Just behind the basket. Great line. Yeah. Great yeah. shot. I'm trying to hyzer something a little bit high to control my distance. I go for my instinct, and that's just nowhere near the basket. I can't. I got nothing today. And all I can say is please stick around for the other three videos from this event because I promise you there's better shots to come. <laughs> this uh, front nine was pretty rough. Just like that jump putt, I mean, skied it high, faded way out to the left. Now I got a tough comebacker for par. James cashes in the birdie to recover from that bogey. He stakes at five down for the front nine. And come on, Greg, save par. Low again, and it was windy out there, but you know, the wind was less the battle than it was my own mental game. I was just really struggling to get it together early on. So I finish at even par, which on a very scorable course is not ideal, but that is the round one front nine for you out here at Panther 335. Three more videos to come in this one. Uh, special thanks again to Dennis, Eric, and everybody with the Ohio Winter League Series Owls. We appreciate you for having us out, sponsoring these events all season uh, and participating in the events all season long was a lot of fun as well. We got to see so many great courses around Ohio. Uh, and at this point, we're just sorry we didn't film all eight of them, uh, but at least we got the last three in. If you haven't been out to this course, there are at least two courses here on the property that are well worth a day trip from anywhere in Ohio or Southern Michigan, uh, Indiana. Uh, such a great time. You can enjoy fun distractions like this train. <laughs> so check out the next three videos coming later this week. Like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.